Welcome to another episode of Silicon Minds Human Hearts. Today we'll be talking to Manash Goswami, who is a principal GPM at Microsoft. Thank you for joining us today, Manash. Thank you. Can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I am uh, I am Manash Goswami. I am a uh, group program manager at Microsoft, and I manage the team of uh, program managers responsible for all of the AI infrastructure that we use to run our AI services uh, in Azure AI. Before we go into your current job, add a little quick peek on, on your career on LinkedIn. Cool. You came from the device industry. How did you get from there into the AI industry? Oh, a series of unfortunate incidents, I would say, but I'm very lucky with the trajectory that I had. I began my career writing code in the OS layer for embedded devices like cell phones. And I'm very familiar with how software interacts with hardware. So that's essentially the DNA which has brought me through my career in machine learning because when we first introduced machine learning in the, into our users, we needed to optimize them because it needs to run efficiently. And that requires us to have clear understanding of what behavior we need from the hardware. Uh, I spent some time running uh, running a project to to optimize machine learning models for devices like uh, you know phones and cameras and speakers. So from there, one thing led to another, and here I am uh, working in the core infrastructure uh, you know area to execute very very large scale AI workloads uh, at Microsoft. When you talk about AI on smaller devices, is that then, for example, the Onyx framework or it's different framework? That's right. Uh, so Onyx framework is essentially a common uh, representation layer of, of ML models uh, that is then used to take the graph and execute it in different uh, chips and different hardware types and operating systems. So this then enables you to kind of decouple how models are built and what frameworks are used to develop the models versus how you need to then execute them on the lower le lower level hardware. We see many people now want to run generative AI locally. I think that's something exciting for you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think running models locally is always going to be a challenge as well as an opportunity. As a new technology comes and gets developed, it's typically developed in the cloud. And when things scale out and become mainstream, we need to run them everywhere and anywhere. And so today you see that like, you know, models that were invented maybe four or five years ago are now optimized as to the point where they can run on small devices like your smartphones and, and on things like a camera. Uh, you know, when you take a picture, the camera uh, automatically focuses on face. That is actually a vision AI model running uh, in your camera model, your module, which is like deeply embedded inside inside your phone. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of like how like you know models evolve and get to get to smaller devices. Now you work on infrastructure specifically for the Gen AI uh, world. Let's call it like that. How hard is, is it to get those models on smaller devices? I, I, uh, it's hard, but with time, uh, it will get there. Uh, so I think the real magic is to make sure that like all the mathematical computations required to execute these large models can be optimized down to be execution blocks, which can then run for uh, run at very low power and low compute environments for specific applications. Like you know, when you look at uh, a generative AI model that's running in the cloud. It's intended to solve many different scenarios, starting with uh, you know summarizing texts or interpreting images, all the way to generating uh, generating content for you. Whereas when you try to bring that model down to a device, you also limit the purpose and the types of scenarios you are applying it for, and that kind of becomes one way for you to uh, like scope limit the model and therefore you're able to run it very efficiently on client devices. Okay. So now you work mostly on infrastructure for the cloud. Correct. Not specifically for devices. Correct. How busy is your life right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, so I think as we have seen the explosion of large models and, and the capabilities that they offer, we, know, we need to match the infrastructure 
to to kind of keep up with it uh, the the nature of model training right now requires thousands of gpus to be interconnected and running efficiently as well as reliably so that our model developers and the model builders can actually execute workloads uh, and and do the do their in data science inventions very very fast and so that requires us to make sure that the infrastructure is healthy up to date secure at all times and we also need to ensure that workloads are making use of the infrastructure in an efficient way so that we eliminate any kind of uh, you know idle cycles that the infra has because uh, you know once you have these gpus in the cloud they are there for everyone to use and so efficiency becomes a very very key uh, factor here i guess efficiency is also linked to the energy consumption of these kind of models to an extent yes uh, what we look at is uh, how fast you are able to run your models as well as how uh, how uh equitable access we have we give to the infrastructure to all the data science users and researchers at microsoft one of the key uh, user uh, cohorts for me are the model builders who are essentially creating new innovations on top of our infrastructure and so enabling equal access and and fair access to all of those uh, resources for everyone becomes a big challenge because there is more need than resources there's so many different kinds of gen ai models these days and we have now the new one deep seek we have llama models we have the open ai models we have a bunch of of uh fi models as well do we need different kinds of infrastructures for it or it can all run on the same yeah i think i think that's that depends so as you said right there are different kinds of models but there are also different kinds of customers so from my perspective the ai workloads need to be use need to use the the same infrastructure and we need to ensure that there is proper isolation between the different models that we run the different security boundaries we need for customer data versus for uh, uh, you know internal data etc so the way we think about the infrastructure reusability is that these uh, we need to make sure that the models all all different types of models from different model families can run within the same gpu uh, infrastructure in addition to that we need to be able to run different workloads training inferencing evaluation they are all different kinds of ai workloads which require different types of uh, hardware characteristics and we optimize our infrastructure to be flexible enough to run across these different ai workloads and then finally we have different customer bases we run ai models to serve internal applications and services at the same time we also serve external customers our our large scale enterprise users as well as day to day everyday uh, users we need to be able to manage the isolation and security guarantees to so that those workloads are run independent of each other and they all need to run in this common infrastructure well that sounds like quite a lot of work to get that all done but To be honest, I was very surprised when DeepSeek came out and only a couple of days later it was available already on Azure. That means your infrastructure is really on point to e- quickly scale up to different kinds of uh, models. Uh, I I would say we are proud of the fact that we were able to stand up uh, DeepSeek so quickly and that speaks to how we are enabling data science agility uh for our uh researchers and developers mm-hmm. to kind of Uh, deploy models very quickly but uh, of course you know there is always opportunities to do more and and that's what keeps us uh, excited and working hard well i think that's a, a very nice finish also of the work that you guys are doing here at microsoft and how fast and agile you are but one more last personal question what's your favorite use of ai in your day to day usage yeah it has changed and it has evolved and more recently with generative ai and the copilots that we have I essentially use uh use our copilots to get me started very quickly for whatever I am doing if I'm looking up new information or I'm looking up old information from a meeting that was like 6 uh, months ago uh our copilots enable the discovery and summarization to instant instantaneously get me started and that's becoming a habit and I expect that that's what's going to get infused in our daily lives 
uh, in the future. Okay, that's an interesting one as well. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, looking forward to what Azure Infrastructure and Cloud AI is going to bring next as well. Thank you. Thank you.